So Movie Maker is one of many video editing software. They all have the same purpose of removing mistakes in a video, adding sound, etc. But they're all going to vary for, for their interface. I think the interface of Movie Maker is one of the easiest ones to work with. I think even easier than iMovie. And a lot of times Apple products pride themselves on their ease, ease of use. But I think this is even easier to use than iMovie. Um, but there's a lot of icons to look at for the first time if you've never worked with this. So when I opened my video, when you opened your video, it showed it right here. And it may look a little different than mine because of the zoom level. Um, on the bottom right corner, for example, you'll see this plus and this minus. This is zoom. This is letting you zoom in or zoom out to see more or less of the video. So try this. If you press the minus sign on the bottom right corner all the way to the left, it should zoom out to show the whole video to only be like one little clip like that. And on the opposite, if you zoom in all the way to the right, you'll see like it take up even more of the space. The purpose of that is I need to find the exact moment when I said one word to cut it out. And when you're zoomed out, you know, this far, it's harder to, to zoom in or to hone in on the one word that I need to remove. I, when I do this editing here, I like to have it zoomed in all the way to the right. Because each one of these represents one second in the video. So here's one second, there's a little divider here, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. So zoomed in all the way to the right lets you look at it at a second by second. When you're zoomed out, these little dividing units are some amount of different amount of time. When you're zoomed out all the way, this whole thing means the whole video, which lasts 1 minute and 21 seconds. So, so that we're all looking at the same thing, make sure your zoom on the bottom right corner is all the way to the right. So this video is 1 minute, 21 seconds, and 3 one hundredths of a second. On the left side we've got play. If you click that play button, again you're not going to hear this. You don't have a uh, speakers, that's fine. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and this is the tech. So you press play and it plays and you see this play head is moving. So far it's moved this far. 8.53 seconds and this playhead also moved this far so 8.53 seconds is, is right there you can pull this playhead over and you see I'm moving throughout the video I'm scrubbing throughout the video and when you do that scrubbing to the right or to the left you see how the time changes there I am at 2030 and here I am at 1790 and at the same time, the black playhead on the right is also moving. So the value of this is being able to jump exactly to the right part in the video. You can also, on the right side, click and drag that black playhead and move it around to exactly where you need it. So try to put your playhead at exactly 10 seconds. Grab that black playhead and move it till you see right there that it says 10. As close to 10.0 as you can. Right there. So this is exactly 10 seconds in my video at that moment. 10 seconds. So you can either drag that or drag that. So this gives you a preview of what's on screen. The, the icon does not change. That's normal. It's the same icon through all 1 minute and 20 seconds. That's normal. That doesn't change. Do you see these sort of like little mountains mm -hmm. at the bottom? What do you think that is? It's the audio. It's my voice. So do you see, so for approximately the first six seconds, rounding up, for the first six seconds, I'm not saying anything. 
And then I start speaking at approximately six seconds. I'm speaking for a while. I pause for some amount of time between here and here. I, I, that is, I'm not speaking, at least. And I can see that if I drag my playhead, I seem to stop speaking at about 1760. I'm doing stuff, and then again, I'm speaking again at 2627. So that was about 10 seconds that I wasn't speaking. So you, when you're zoomed in all the way to the right here, again, zoom all the way to the right, because then you'll be able to see exactly every word that, you're, that I'm saying. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is the Tech Review Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about... So this is just a quick video I did about reviewing a, a cell phone. Let's say my, my business is about technology and, su and stuff, and I've got a YouTube channel where I review technology. So uh, I'm talking to the camera and saying stuff. From my projector, you can probably see it looks really dark. On your screen, it probably looks a little better. My projector is a little weird. Well, one of the many things that we can do in a video editing software, for example, is fix that to some degree. It's best to record your video as high quality as you can before editing it, instead of trying to fix things after the fact. So, a tip right here. Tips. Try to record your video as bright as possible beforehand. Try to record your sound as loud as possible beforehand. And I don't mean that it then looks so bright it's overexposed, and I don't mean that it's so loud that the voice is distorted. Um, that video there, it's very common. You see what I'm doing is I'm standing in front of something that's bright. Even the best cameras, are, if you have them in automatic mode, are going to get confused because here it saw the brightness of the window behind me and calibrated the screen to that, which means it darkened me. So even the smartest cameras are going to be fooled by that. And then audio-wise, same sort of thing, the closer I, I have. You can't see it on my screen here, but on your screen you can probably see a little black thing right here. This is my microphone. So I've got a microphone right here to also capture the audio better. If I wanted to fix this, I should have turned on more lights in the room or reoriented myself so that the light of the window is hitting me instead of me standing in front of the window. But I did it on purpose here so that we can see that we have these basic edits that we can do to our video. This video is in the project. See how it's got a blue highlight? The whole video is selected. And at the top, we have a variety of menus. And one of them is the Video Tools Edit menu. Some of these tabs up here appear always, and some of them appear depending on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to edit the video, you're going to have a video tab. If you're trying to edit the audio, you're going to have an audio tab. If you're trying to edit text, you're going to have a text tab. I'm trying to edit this video, so when you click anywhere on the video, you'll see at the top Video Tools, and then click on the Edit tab. So you see you have various things that you can do to this video. Speed it up. Here's something you can do for fun. It says speed one times. Well, let me speed it up two times. OK, I can speed it even faster up to eight times. It's so fast it turns off the volume, but I can go all the way up to 64 times. So the original video that was 1 minute and 20 seconds long, now it's 1 second and 27 one hundredths of a second. So the whole video goes by in 1 second. It was 1 minute long, and here it goes by in 1 second. Obviously, that doesn't really work for this particular video, but that speed up or slow down can be used for different effects, such as you're trying to demonstrate something, and instead of showing it step by step in, in regular motion, you can speed it up to show people how to do something 
a little faster. The opposite is that you can then slow it down. So let's say I put it on half speed. So now I have a really good hostage video here where I'm saying my demands. <laughs> And even all the way down to one one eighth speed. Suddenly, my video. Oh, that's interesting. My video that was one minute long now is ten minutes long, because it really, really, really slowed it down. Again, for what particular purpose? You know, if you really need to show something very slowly, I'll put it back on one speed. Well, the other things that I can edit uh, about this video, for example, are the visual effects. Let's fix this brightness. In my case, it's too dark, maybe yours as well. So switch over to the visual effects tab. You have these special effects you can apply, but the one I want for the moment on the right side here is brightness. So you select the video, you go to effects, visual effects, and then brightness. Increase or decrease the brightness of the video or photo. Clicking on that, then gives me a slider. If I slide it to the right, the video gets brighter. Now you can actually see me. Or on the other side, you can darken it. So just so that you can see it on my projector, I'm going to turn it all the way up. On yours, you might not need it that bright. But again, it's better to have the video recorded properly beforehand than trying to fix it after because sometimes there's only so much this can do. I need it a little brighter, but I've already maxed it out. So it's better to try to record it as loud or as bright as possible without needing extra edits. So if you made this change just like me, you've done a lot of hard work. So, so far, you want to save. Click the Save button on the top left. You want to remember to save. I don't believe this has auto save. Other software does. But this doesn't save. So the problem could be is as you're working with this video editing software and suddenly it crashes and you hadn't saved it for half an hour, you lost a lot of work that you need to redo. So remember to save your work. Remember Control S or Command S also works to save. So you make a change, you save a change. Yes? So is it just that one frame that we brighten? The whole video, because all the frames right now are part of one video at this point. Okay. We can separate the frames and have only a certain part bright and another part dark. We can do that, but right now it's applying to everything. And if you're not sure, you can then say this, apply to all. It's automatic at the moment because it's all one video. But if I had multiple videos, I'd have to brighten them all at the same time with apply all. Yes? Can you revert back to... Uh the original, or is it, does it manipulate the video file? This uh, most video editing software nowadays uh, is non-destructive. So it leaves my original video, the one that I have back in the folder, the original video is still dark. It's just that this information is being saved into this Windows Movie Maker file. So even in a moment when I cut things out, it doesn't cut it out from the original. Uh, the original video is always intact. It's just that that editing information is saved in this file. Yes? Maybe it's for the question, but can you do this, the, the fastest or the slowing down things and also change the lighter in par partially? Yes. Let's do that right now. This, at the moment, is all one long video. We have a way to split it, to divide it into sections. So let's do this. Let's say um, at approximately, in my case, 9.6 seconds. Let's put your playhead at about 9.6, right here. Right click right there where you put the playhead. So 9.6 seconds, and then right click. You have a bunch of options. One of them is split. Let's click split right here. Now we've got two video clips from one video file. 
the first nine seconds, notice when I click anywhere there, that gets highlighted in blue. And then this, the rest of the time, clicking there highlights the rest. So anywhere where I put my playhead, now let's say I put it over here on 12.07. Doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere there. Right click, split. So now I've got three clips. I've got the first nine seconds. I've got you know two seconds here, and then the rest of the minute. And you can tell because you get the little sprocket holes, the classic film holes on the side of the film. This is one clip that I can then brighten differently, slow it down, speed it up, and it only applies to this one set of time. So. The, having the skill of editing of going to the right spot to delete stuff you know, I'm going to right click and split here to then delete it and such this is the one that takes the while this is what takes a video that was recorded in one minute and then it takes me five minutes to edit it because I need to watch it again I need to figure out where I need to make a mistake cut this part do that part yes Uh, can you repeat that? Yeah, um, can you also delete some of those frames on the right side so that you kind of get a claymation type? And the, you, know, you can you can do the claymation technique. Uh, not exactly in this way. It would be more like building different frames together instead of removing frames. I think, but yes, you you can do that in a in a different kind of a way. very very similar the interface is going to be different but it's still going to be the same ideas about brighten a video split a clip and then we'll do animation to merge clips and all of that so different interface but same concepts and oftentimes you know doing the right click or control click on the Mac will give you the menu that should be similar because these are common actions Um, I split some clips there, but let's say actually I didn't want to quite do that. So we have our best friend here, undo. So let's say I'm going to take that back. At the top left we have undo, which is control Z or command Z. Let's say I'm going to undo that to take it back. I'm going to undo, the split goes away, and I undo again, it goes back. So now I've got again one clip in total. Because what I really want to do is, if you notice the video, there's at the very beginning, there's you know six seconds of me sort of preparing myself. I don't need that in the video. That, that that's superfluous. I only need when I start to talk. So I need to cut out about five or six seconds at the beginning. So the way I would do that, let's say I'm going to move my playhead before I start talking. I can see that I start talking at about right here. So I think, OK, I'll put the playhead somewhere close there. Don't rely only on the audio to decide where to make edits, to split, and to delete. Also, rely on the visuals. I don't want to start with that expression. I want to start with a calm expression and then start to talk. So I have to back up just a little bit to some point. right there maybe so it actually happened to be 5.4 or so that's where I want to um, actually split the video so that I can delete the empty part so this again is the, the part that takes practice where do I split my video where do I blend my video I can show you how to split and how to blend but where to do it or why to do it, that's a little harder to teach, and that depends on the video. So for right now, let's say at approximately 5.43 or so, this is where I want to right click and split. 5.43 or so, that's where I split it. I've got part at the beginning that I don't need and the rest that I do need. So now the part that I don't need, I can click it to select it, and then I can right-click it to remove it. So we 
careful here. Make sure you split at about 5.4 first. Then click to select the part you don't want the first five seconds. Then right click remove. Now my video is down to 1 minute 15 seconds instead of 1 minute 20 seconds. And now when I play it, it starts off right away without that first fumbling around. Everyone get that? Anyone need a little help on that part? One thing that I would say when you do this on a regular basis, right click split, right click split, when you do it on a regular basis, even that right click split takes a while and those little seconds add up. You have the ability as well up on the edit menu to do the same thing. So when you've got a clip, a video selected on the video menu, you have split right there also, a button that you can press, you can always get to, and a keyboard shortcut, letter M to make a split, I suppose. So when you're a power user, you say, I want to split right here. I'm going to press M on the keyboard, split. So these keyboard shortcuts really, really help. And most of these items, when you hover your mouse on top of them, you're going to see that it has a keyboard shortcut that can help you speed things up. So M to make a split is how I remember it. Just regular M. If it needs a control M and such, it'll tell you, like save. Save says control S. But some of these with only a letter, like split are just the letter M. Even the play button, space, space bar. When you press space on the keyboard, yeah, that will play. And that will pause. So I use that all the time. Instead of, my mouse is over here. I'm, I'm doing work over here. To move my mouse back over to play, and then go back here and go back here, yeah, it takes two seconds, but these little seconds add up. My hand's already by the keyboard. So I'm going to click where I need right here. I'm going to press space, play it. I'm going to click over here, space, play it. So even the space bar is a keyboard shortcut for you simply to pause and play the video. So if I play this for a little bit, you'll see that there's also a part where I stop talking for a while, like 10 seconds approximately from here to here. This is one of the things, again, you don't have to rely only on audio because people think, wherever I'm not speaking, I must cut it out. No, I could be showing the product on screen and I'm not talking and I wouldn't cut that out. So I'm going to play it for a moment. I'm going to go to this part and play it and then see what that's about. Okay, so I am trying to unlock the device to show something else. I can cut all of this out. It's not necessary. It has. So I, I start talking again. There's a part then in the middle here that I don't need. So I need to split it somewhere here and split it somewhere here. And there will be a part in the middle that I don't need. There's a clip at the beginning, a split part in the middle, and then a split where it continues. So in my case, at approximately 12 minutes, 30 seconds or so, I can right click split or press M on the keyboard. Then I'm going to move the playhead somewhere over here, maybe at about 20.20, .20, and then also right click and split. So I've got the first part where I'm speaking. I split it. I've got the part here that is that I don't need split to then have more that I do need. So I've got a part in between where I can then right click to remove. So now it's going to flow from here to here. And it's really good. It has all. And it's really good. It has. So all of those 10 seconds that weren't necessary anymore, I deleted it.
people then often say, well, it was obvious that something was changed or cut or it was a big jump or what, what's happening. People, when first start to work with video editing, kind of get a little obsessed about like, well, I was looking at the camera in a certain spot here, and then when I jumped over here, I'm looking at a different spot. Um, you see right here, even looking at it, see how suddenly my hand is holding the phone a certain way, and then suddenly I'm over here. Some people will say, well, that's a mistake, that looks weird, that lo that, that's odd, that, that looks fake. I, this is, again, video editing. Um, if you look at commercials or movies and all of that, they have all of that into account and that's very common that you're looking at something and then it switches to something else on purpose. Or maybe blended, maybe one thing fades into another thing. Or maybe there is a seamless transition. Seamless transitions are pretty hard to do because it has to be completely planned out I have to have rehearsed this, that I made no mistakes, that I did all of the motion on the first try. So let's say I wanted to blend it from this view into this view. I want to go from one clip, I want to blend from this clip into this clip. So if I select the clip, I have animations. These animations will blend from one clip into another. And you can preview it by just putting your mouse on it, not clicking, but if you put your mouse on top of it, see that? It's going to blend from this one view into that other view with this effect, the bow tie effect. This one does it in the opposite way. This one does it as the diagonal. There's even more of them down here. If you scroll down, there's this one over here. All of them, except for like three, I think are over the top. I think they're too flashy. I think usually for most people, they're too animated. They, they're too distracting. Like, you know, this one over here, like teeth or whatever most of these you probably wouldn't use I, I I wouldn't use most of these for clients they're like way too juvenile I think they're too weird like that turn the page welcome to our wedding so uh, there's really only like three of them that I would ever recommend that you use and unfortunately they're on the second screen here these three I almost never use them and I don't recommend you use them on the second page down here it's these three this one right here, blur. This one right here, blur through black. And this one right here, crossfade. And most likely, you're going to use crossfade. These are the classic fade from one view to another. Everything else, like these weird pixelation and such, really, you're not going to use those. Those are very amateur. Those are like, look what I can do. I just learned Movie Maker. You want, really, one of these three. They're subdued enough that they look professional. But of course, if you want to be ironic or fun or whatever, definitely use the iris. Or definitely use the heart shape. Or this weird blob. Or these weird pixelations. Welcome to 1984. Yes? If you're, excuse me, through the whole process, um, you can always go back to the original video and start over. Yeah. Like just by using the undo button or well, undo really only works for like the last couple of changes you made. But if I made two changes and then seven more changes, I have to undo all of those seven changes to get back to those first two. You always have the ability to add your video back in because the original video is completely unedited. So if you realize what you've done, I would undo it right, right away. You, you don't quite have the flexibility in this software to, to skip undos. In other software, you can. But worst, worst case scenario, just bring in your video again, and then you've got a clean video. So let's say, okay, I'm going to blend. I'm going to use one of these, you know, one of these simple conservative ones. It works just fine. I want to do this crossfade. So I will click it. And then what changes here is that this video 
is going to transition or animate into this video. For this amount of time here, one and a half seconds, this one is going to blend into this one. It's one and a half seconds because it says right there, duration, 1.5 seconds. It takes one and a half seconds to go from this previous clip into this next clip. And one confusing thing is you want to apply these animations to the clip you're blending into. I'm coming from this clip to this clip. So that's the one I select, and that's the one I add the transition the animation. So then when I play it, I usually back up a little bit so then I can play it. It's the newest device and it's really it has good. all of Well, visually it blended really nice. But do you notice audio wise? It's the newest device and it's it really has good. all of the my voice overlaps. So I used the right tool, but I didn't do it quite right. I s split the clips in such a way that now that when they transition, they, they overlap. One way to try to fix that is, OK, maybe I need a shorter duration. I'm going to take it down to 0 0.25, 1 quarter of a second. Notice here now the, the little, uh, the little uh, icon here showing transition is even shorter. So now when I play it, So the animation happened a lot faster, and, it's really good. and my voice didn't overlap. I still don't quite like that. So if I undo that, back to before I split the clip, I took it back before I split the clip. I need to split it with enough thought before beforehand that I'm going to add a transition of one and a half seconds. So maybe I need to go back a little bit further. Now when I add the transition, when I've got more space, it's the newest device and it's really good. It has a So right there I, my voice doesn't overlap. It's the newest device and it's really good. It has visuals overlap, voice doesn't, and again, depending on the video, depending on what effect you're trying to achieve, this may have been the result or not. So in this point here, I'm showing off the, the screen of the phone. It's silent. I don't need to cut that part out. I, I'm trying to show what's on the device. I, maybe I want to cut that part out. The camera feed. So simply because I don't have audio in a spot doesn't mean uh, I want to remove that. So. Let me play that again and then figure out where I need to split it and what I need to keep and what I need to remove. As many of them as you want. So probably just show up until that point before the screen changes. So in my case, somewhere around here, split it. I'm going to start speaking, but I know I want to do a transition, so I'll bring it back a couple of seconds. Split that. Then the part in the middle, remove. And then add a transition. The camera feature. Maybe a different one this time. You see this transition fade from black or through black, I think work better because I've changed my view enough that it's like a new concept and dipping into black for a moment and then coming out of it catches the person's attention that here's something different. So if we watch that again, 
I'm showing the phone for a moment. It goes black and then back to the video and then I'm at a different position, a different angle and talking about a different thing. The camera features a 20 megapixel sensor so you'll be able to get all of the best photos. So I'm making notes here. The process of editing is making your video better. Better as removing mistakes. Creating a flow. Creating something interesting or creative. So this is why this could take a while, because I simply am going to go here for a little while removing my mistakes. Here's the part where I paused too long. Here's the part where I dropped the phone. I'm going to remove all those mistakes. The flow, that's a little bit more artistic in that, OK, I don't really need to show this. I recorded it, but I don't really need it. It slows down the video. It doesn't, it doesn't help. The flow also was there about editing. Um, the uh, in relation also to the creativity uh, was the fade to black. It went from this view to this view with black in between because I changed to a different view. Making it better also such as adding text. Well, let's add text here. Let's say I want uh, some text to appear on screen. I'm talking about a particular device. I want the text to be visible. What is this device? Let's say it's my commercial for my business, so I want to flash my phone number at the bottom when I talk about my business. So we can add text. Let's see, there's a spot over here where it might be useful to add text. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is the Tech Review Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about the Motorola Moto G4. So I'm mentioning the particular device, the particular phone. I would like to display the text of what this is. So I need to move the playhead where I think I want that text to appear. Today we're going to talk about the Motorola. It looks like I start to say Motorola at about this area right here. So maybe I want to start to display the text as soon as I say the word. Maybe I want to start to display the text a little bit before I start to say the word. This is again the part about you have to decide on your particular video what makes sense, how you want it to be. So in my case, right before I start to say it, the on the word the, that's when I start to say, that's when I want to add the text. So back on the home tab, so we have lots of things that we can do. Um, from the home tab, we also have an area here of add text. I can add a bunch of things and we've got three of text. In Movie Maker they delineate it as title, caption, credits. Other software might not, but these are related to text. In Movie Maker, also you can put your mouse on it, title, add a new title before the selected item. So usually title is some text that's going to appear like at the very beginning of the video some text that appears first about what this video is on a black background or other kind of background. Credits, blank credits, which appear at the end of the, at the, end of the project. So credits like you're used to on a movie. You, you, you finish the movie and then the credits scroll up. You can do that effect here pretty easily. And then caption is any text you want to add over selected video or photo. So I want to add some um, some text anywhere in between the clips. That's the one I want here. So in my case, at about 240, 240, that's where I want to add my text. So I click Caption. I get a new track right here. Add a video track. Here's a text track. It starts 
here, it ends here, it lasts up there, start time, duration, it lasts 5.4 seconds. If I want the text to last longer or shorter, I just change that. And I have a new tab, because I'm working with text. I have the text tab, where then now I have all the things about text. What's the font, the size, the color, even animation. I can have the text animate in, animate out. Do a flip, grow, do a really fancy effect like that that won't that you people won't take you seriously with. Um, you have all of these effects also for text. For these, I would say again, just use the basic one because some of them like this, you know, that's kind of interesting, but. I think that's too over the top for most people. So probably just a simple fade in. Or maybe one of these where, where the text moves into view, like that. So we will use that basic fade. You can then edit the text. You can click here and edit the text and say Motorola. G4. I might have to change this um, size and I can move it around. I can increase the size of the text, decrease it. Left align, center align, change the color of the text. Bold. edit the text, you can click the text, back to text format. I think it lasted too long. The default was 5.4 seconds, but I only need it to be at about this length here when I finish saying the name of the device, so I can cut that down, let's say 3 seconds. Talk about the Motorola Moto G4. It's the new or I can write here myself 3.75 seconds. Talk about the Motorola Moto G4. It's the newest device. And remember when you make changes to save. So we're going to talk about the Motorola Moto G. So when you're doing this video editing and you're the subject, you're going to realize, I sound like that? Yes, you sound like that. Everyone else knows it. <laughs> so uh, we never realize how we sound until we're recorded. And then you're going to get tired of hearing yourself because it's very common to rewind and play the same part over and over just to figure out the right effect or edit or, or something. So Today we're going to talk about the Motorola Moto G. So I wanted to figure out exactly where does the text start, where does it end. I have to play it a few times, and then I, I get the right spot. Newest device, and it's really good. It has all of the apps that you're going to need to succeed in social media, and you're able to download as many of them as you want. So here, uh, on this part where I'm just showing off the device, I could maybe add some text as well. Go in and add home caption and say anything here. Um, download apps on Google Play. Just any 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 sort of text to to display on screen. Now the problem when you overlay text is the background. I wrote white text. 
And this text right here on my dark shirt looks great. But then this text where there's also brightness doesn't look great. White text on a, on a bright background. So there's that contrast, white on dark, or dark on light. Light on dark, opposites, looks good. Right, here I have light on dark, very readable. Light on light, not readable. And the opposite is true, dark on dark. So the problem with adding these, these captions is that it might be very difficult to pick the right color and such. So what if I go back and I say, OK, well, let me put it on black, because there's parts here. Now it looks great here. Download apps. I can read it. Dark on light. But now we've got dark on dark. So when you've seen other videos where they put text, but it's on top of a little background of white or something else, that you can't quite do that here. You cannot do that here. This is, again, when the higher quality software gives you more options. So I have to settle here. Is it going to be too dark on some points, too bright on other points, not visible? Maybe I can pick another color. Maybe I'll go with yellow. Will that be, will that be bright enough to stand out on all the colors? Maybe. So maybe a little better. I think we can add a basic drop shadow, too. Let's see where it is. Or oh, we can do text outline. We can do this. We can add font. So I added that. I added, oops, I added the um, outline. Now, whether the part that's light is visible and the part on dark is visible. And that was by going to text tools here on the very right, adding an outline and then some sort of color. So text can be very useful, but if it's not readable, then it's not good. There's a part here that, that so there's a part here that I'll also remove. Let's say somewhere here I split it. Somewhere here I'll split it and then delete in the middle. These transitions can be useful and oftentimes they look nice to blend clips from one to the other. But there's plenty of times where you simply want it to be one view and then suddenly another view. That's another kind of transition as well. You might not think about it that way, but it, it might be a way also to cut from one part of action to another. At the best resolution, I think it's a very... At the best resolution, I think... So maybe that... So that's something I may want to do, figuring out where to split this. Thank you. 
Victor for the Tech Review Tuesday. So let's take one more break, and then uh, we'll talk about adding more branding to the to the video and uh, music. It might be nice to add some background music to this, and then um, and then and then wrapping it up. So it's uh, uh, 11:32. We'll take a break until 11:42, and then we'll go on.